Yeah, it is a little bit Hello Intrepid Heroes, isn't it? Hello, and welcome. Um, I'm David. We're going to be running through something a little bit differently today because I have been struggling with voiceover for a long time in many games, and I am finally doing something about it. Yay! So if you have been working with uh, different team members on Google Sheets, uh, if you have been looking to transcribe audio, if you've ever opened an audio file that said it was supposed to say hello, and it said goodbye, or it said something else entirely, uh, this will help you out. So we're going to be focusing on building a Google Sheets implementation here that will be able to run some automated file transcription. We're gonna be using the Google Cloud Platform. Uh, there is a slight cost associated with it, so be sure that you have the budget or your project has the budget before doing so. Uh, but I built a couple of safety nets in there so that once you get things running the first time, uh, it should just be about building up that transcription. Now, transcription is not the answer for actually writing down human results. Uh, it's very normal for uh, a human to need to check a lot of this stuff uh, but what I wanted to do was get the idea of at least we don't need to hand check every file to be sure that it doesn't say something completely different or isn't empty um, or has a bad file name or something like that and at the same time develop this uh, system where we could link uh, files on a Google Sheets so that a person that might need to do some transcription do some translation do some uh, media work like take these files and use them in live ops stuff or use them uh, in in any other media could do so as well without having to pester you for the link so the way this works is that we have this google sheet here now i have a folder id and an api key here in these black boxes i'm not going to be showing you those uh, because otherwise you'll bill me with stupid sounds of horses or something. Horse! Now we have uh, a Google Drive where I've uploaded a couple of files. I just have transcribed me one and two here. You can upload lots of files here. There is, uh, as I say, I mean, for a pretty small amount, uh, you get a pretty large amount of Google Drive storage and it is a decent way to keep your files in one place altogether if you don't have a server-side solution as well. Slash, I should just highlight, this is the code that you'll need for linking your Google Drive and you'll also need to make sure it's set to uh, be able to be viewed by anybody. So if I go to the share and I click share, it'll open up and say that anyone with a link can view it. Um, you don't need to be able to edit it, but you do need to be able to view it. The next thing you'll have to do is set up a project in the Google Cloud Platform. Now there's many guides for that and I'm probably not going to cover it here, but you can set up a basic version of this and then this is the only API you'll need, which is the Cloud Speech to Text API. This is something that Google has built through their cloud service. So this is a bunch of computers running somewhere uh, and you can upload audio files to it, get back translation results, transcription results and all that kind of thing. So you could definitely expand this. And we'll be setting up this uh, app script. Now app script, if you're not familiar, is part of this extensions framework where we can click app script and be able to run additional logic. Now all this additional logic uh, in this app script here goes with generating this file link. So actually finding this audio file in the Google Drive, uh, linking it to the this file link so that somebody else could listen to it, and then pulling a transcription or a trans transcription result uh, from the Google Cloud Platform service. Uh, this expected is what I already have deemed as what I've you know have written like maybe a script writer write something before you record it, or you're pretty sure this is what was supposed to be in the audio file, um, and you can do a big copy paste here for all your uh, sort of words to make sure they're all the same and then a confidence interval now you'll pretty much never get a confidence interval of a very high amount uh, especially if there's short words or if they're made up words or if there's words in some sort of law that isn't a, a real world uh, or, or place uh, that can be an issue but confidence intervals can be set up uh, just to say hey should I check this file you know if it's above 0.6 you might say I don't need to check it but anything below um, so for instance here the we were expecting scoopy whoop wow this text the script writer wrote sure is wrong uh, and we ended up getting something from a previous video of mine uh, which you can watch all over this channel uh, and you should subscribe and do that too but if you're looking to run this, uh, we would click this little transcribe button and I'll show you what that looks like uh, from the start. So I can actually get rid of these, all these elements 
um, and this will now be the state of the sheet that you would expect. So this is maybe pasting in a whole bunch of file names. Um, you notice, you know, I just dumped them all in the Google Drive. I don't need to do any setup, but I could add uh, folder directories and things like that if I wanted to as well, if you have different actors or something like that going on. But I want this to generate a file link for me, and then I want it to get the transcription result for me, then I want to compare the transcription result with the API key to get the confluence interval just to tell me should I bother looking at this file or is it fine? Um, again, this is not like an engineering thing. If you're looking to fix the audio faults or noise reduction or engineering, that's still a manual process that needs to be done. This is purely just to check, do the words say what they're supposed to say. Um, don't use the transcription for your subtitles. Don't use the transcription in place of a person. Uh, it doesn't really work. This little button here uh, is just a picture that, that runs a script. So I'll click that and it will run the script and then we'll go through the script in a little bit. This can take a little bit of time. And again, it is about uploading each file separately, getting a transcription result back, passing the, all that uh, language around and then pasting it back in. So you'll see that it does take a little bit of time. You'll do it once, it'll fall, fall through and start plotting them out. So we can see here it has started running one of these. Uh, it's got the transcription result. It's made a link to a file. It's got a confluence interval. And I've said that we maybe don't have to check it. We maybe could, we don't have to. And then we've got one that comes up in red. If you've never used conditional formatting before and you're wondering why do these colors magically change, uh, you'll, you're about to seem like a, a much more intelligent person at work uh, than normal. So <laughs> the way this works is I have a few formulas here with conditional formatting. And this is just to say, what color do I make this cell if something else happens? Uh, so in this instance, if this A cell is blank, uh, then we, we don't do any of this because uh, it's the first one that runs. These do kind of run like conditional Boolean statements, like one, two, three, four, five. So the first one being false means that it stops, or sorry, the first one being true means that it stops. The range here ranges the entire F column. So all of these will be run. This is why at the start, the uh, these were all red because there are file names and it's saying, I think you should check because we don't have any uh, transcription from them yet. Next up, if the confluence confluence interval next to it is between you know greater than 0.7 we mark it as green if it's between 0.6 and 0.7 we go orange 0.4 and 0.6 we go yellow and anything less than 0.4 i would say is definitely worth a check this is like significant uh mistakes in the uh transcription you can see this will hopefully at least alleviate that first pass, but let's have a look at the script where all this stuff happens because you can start chaining together some pretty cool logic. Um, if I keep clicking this transcribe button, nothing will happen now uh, because we've already got a transcription result. And that's because of a couple of the built-in versions. It will continue updating the confidence, confidence interval. So if you, we keep updating these, uh, this expected version that will change as well. Let's look at the script. So the button itself, if you right click on the, oh sorry, click on this little button here, we have assign a script. Now this is just an image, so you can just go insert drawing, make a drawing, put it in, type that, there's your button. That's how you run any any app script straight through, uh, straight through Google Sheets. Inside the script itself, uh, we get the active sheet, which is just the version that we're on at the moment. Uh, so that might need to be expanded if you intend to run this on many sheets at once. Uh, but I don't think this should be necessarily part of uh, something that has a lot of high traffic. It's more of an output thing later on. You're getting raw data that you can pass on to somebody else. The folder ID, uh, this is the Google Drive location, which is going to be behind these uh, black boxes here, just so for privacy because API keys are very, very dangerous um, for other people to get a hold of. Finally, we have, not finally, we have the folder. So we get the folder from the folder ID. We ask the drive side of this. There'll be some notifications that come up, first of all, to say like, do you want to let uh, drive handle this? And you say, yes. We get the row index of the first file. This is going to crawl down our spreadsheet in the A column, which is where we've said that our folders and file names are and look for the first thing with WAV. This is essentially just to jump these header rows. Um, you can do this in many different ways. You can put a magic number there of just say three or whatever you want to do. 
So this returns the first index. We use that index to generate a list of file names from uh, where we're at to the bottom of the file. Um, each of them uh, is stored inside this file names array that we'll be addressing later to kind of iterate over the array and get all the file names out. The API key itself, um, again, is taken there just so you, it isn't hard coded inside your code, never hard code API keys, or like GitHub will immediately give you a message saying that your API key has been compromised and that'd be bad uh, and it'll freak you out. We go through the file names and we check if they have a WAV file. Now I only support WAV files. You can add MP3s here, but then Google Cloud Platform will basically explode. And um, I assume people come to your house and torture you if you use F uh, MP3s, but uh, it hasn't happened to me yet. So the we will grab the file in the folder uh, with this find file in folder. Uh, function we have which is to say we use the folder we search through it for the file name uh, we get that that file in particular um, basically we're going to keep going until we check that we've found the file um, and if we go through all of the files and we don't find it uh, we return nothing and then the whole function basically stops uh, or basically skips that entry um, otherwise we return the file so this is giving us access to the audio file itself that we'll be sending off from there we're going to grab like some information about the files just to cache it so that if we choose to run this script again uh, we're not going to be charged for the whole transcription again transcription does get very expensive uh, if you run the same version of this over and over again on thousands and thousands of lines so be very careful run small batches first and then uh, move on from there uh, it does go to say the Google Cloud platform itself has uh, some costs and a pretty good dashboard for your usage um, in in terms of uh, the quotas you can set up so that you know you don't you aren't overcharged and things like that and it would be worth doing that as well uh, just to be sure that you don't go wild and have a massive bill uh, at the end of the day. We store things like the file link, the ID, the transcription. Actually, we don't need the file ID anymore, but um, oh, I'll leave it there, it's fine. The current transcription, if there is one, the current similarity, if there is one, uh, and we get the expected transcription, which is the one that was uh, handed over as part of the start of the sheet, what we expect it to be, uh, the file should be. And we check, uh, is do we already have the file link? This is generating uh, this file link button here, so I can you know click on it and, and have a listen. Uh, this will just open up another uh, another drive window with the audio file to have a listen to you know have a listen to that uh, so i can confirm that i've got the right audio file as well if i've got the wrong audio file then the transcription result will be something else and then i'll find oh i've actually named the audio file wrong everyone will be happy uh, not everyone but some people will be happy i'll be happy you'll be happy anyway the current transcription if we don't already have one we'll uh set up one um, we'll grab the audio file itself now again we already have this element here uh, we can just do this dot get url that's where the link comes from which can dot get url if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to like right click share right click share 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 paste share paste share paste uh, definitely look at app script for that kind of thing it's quite easy to get into the current transcription we're going to do this transcribe audio field file feel what do you feel uh, which means we're going to get the active spreadsheet again we're going to get this file blob uh, which is going to get the audio file itself we're going to get the api url which is going to be that speech recognized url uh, and we're going to get the this payload element this is a, a json file packet thing that you're going to send across which kind of configures the google cloud engine to do something um, it at the moment i believe only works on 16-bit uh, audio files so if you're doing transcription your best bet is actually to make the files mono 16-bit uh, and as small as you can uh, because it'll be cheaper that way it's charged by the second not by the word uh, so you want to go through and uh, work with shorter files basically then we want to set up this options uh, JSON payload so that we send this across. Um, if you ever find that this starts bugging up, you can stop this muted HTTP exceptions uh, to get some more information, but I've added a little bit of a dirty JSON response a little bit further down. So if you ever find that your API key is rate limited or uh, you've got the wrong drive file or something else has happened, um, the internet's 
you know, blown up and everyone that's working is playing Baldur's Skate instead, uh, is that will dump out here. We'll get some sort of context and, and kind of move through that. So that will give you a version of this, which will give you the Baldur's Gate response. Um, and by Baldur's Gate response, of course, I mean JSON response. There's Baldur's Gate happening, and I'm thinking about Baldur's Gate. Everyone should be playing Baldur's Gate instead of doing this. So finally, we have the similarity, uh, the similarity um, that we hook up because we're kind of back here now. We've got a new transcription. We've got a, uh, we add that transcription to the sheet uh, with this set value. Um, everything's kind of queried by rows and columns. So I being the current row that we're at, plus three being the offset. Uh, that shouldn't really actually be three. I should change that. It should be first row index. Uh, so I'll have to update all those threes as first row indexes, but that's okay. Finally, we will get this similarity. I'm using Jacquard similarity, and this is a pretty well established uh, version of similarity. We tokenize the input, we split up all the strings into uh, versions of these without uh, spaces, and then we do the intersection of those so we compare how many of them match up, and we get the union size of the two sets. It's very fast, it's very optimized, uh, it's very good. So a great way to use, uh, a, a great way to add uh, a small amount of error checking just to be sure. Do I have the right file? Does it say what I expect it to say? And give yourself a little bit of a chance to catch these things. Now, if you ever want to uh, tune these, because like maybe you have uh, some kind of, you know, fictional thing. If you throw in fictional language into this and you're expecting a good result, I'm, I'm a big fan of how you think, but it's, uh, it's not going to end up that well for you. So if you do want to change those formulas, it's just a matter of opening those up and having a look. Now I could add pages and pages and pages of this stuff and I can also reuse the same app script because the app script itself, uh, while it can do all sorts of funky things, like I could deploy this into like a web app and then have other people connect to it, uh, it is just a really good way of addressing the spreadsheet without having to like pull it into a Python thing, get the Sheets API and pass it all as CSV files. You can do it all with JavaScript or this faux JavaScript thing that AppScript is. Um, and it has access to a whole bunch of different commands. Plus you can do this even, uh, you can trigger it over time. So you could just have this run every now and then just to keep things updated and flag people when, uh, when they go wrong. So I'm gonna pop up the script itself uh, on my website, it'll be weaveraudio.com. I know it's something a little bit different. I'm not normally doing Unreal Engine videos and uh, I kind of view any tech audio problem is a pretty tool oriented tech audio problem. And I felt like this was one that I've had this discussion so many times in so many fields and so many departments. And I wanted to offer a way to solve it in a pretty low cost way that uh, is scalable, collaborative to work with different people, big fan of Google Sheets and everything it's done with uh, combining the work together and being able to um, uh, help people work alongside each other on these massive projects. Um, and something like just being sure that the audio file that said it was transcribe me dot one said the thing that I expected it to say, or roughly the thing I expected it to say, as opposed to something completely different, uh, very, very beneficial. Otherwise you get a Spider-Man 2 uh, Puerto Rico flag situation, uh, which we don't want. So don't let your flags uh, be wrong and I'll see you next time.